What's going on, everyone? Welcome to On the Clock right here on Forward Progress. I am Rob Pizzola, and today I'm going to put myself in the shoes of Cowboys GM Jerry Jones and their director of player personnel, Stephen Jones, and I'm drafting for the 2024 Dallas Cowboys. The rules are simple here. I'm going to use Pro Football Focus's mock draft simulator and keep the default settings for everything. I'm drafting the top three rounds in this year's draft. And this is what I would do if I was able to make the draft pick, not what I think is going to happen, not what Jerry Jones is going to do. I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm making the picks. I'm a big believer in drafting for value and not necessarily drafting for positional need, but I'll try to explain my thought process through every single one of these picks. You guys let me know how I did in the comments down below. If you'd have done anything differently or if you liked what I did, uh, you can let me know. I'm sure to at least butcher a couple names as well if I do. So be it. There's no need to tell me I'm an idiot. And as always, if you're looking to wager on anything NFL draft, NFL, or really anything for that matter, Pinnacle should be your sportsbook of choice. 25 years in business with a stellar reputation amongst bettors. You must be 19 plus, not available in the US. And as always, please play responsibly. Okay, let's get into it here. We'll bring up Pro Football Focus. And again, Cowboys picking 24th in the first round, three rounds. We're going to enter the draft. And Typically speaking, there's some thought to, should the team trade up? The issue with the Dallas Cowboys heading into this year's draft is that they have so many different positional needs to fill that it doesn't really make a ton of sense to give up the 24th pick and extra assets to move up. Tony Pollard left in the offseason. At wide receiver, they're thin after cutting Michael Gallup. Tackle position is an issue. They'll move Tyler Smith to left tackle, right tackle still an issue. Center, Tyler Biotish left in the offseason. Their defensive line struggled last year. At linebacker, late Nett Van Der Esch retired. At corner, Stephon Gilmore is out. And Trayvon Diggs is coming in off of a, a, an ACL injury, which who knows how he's going to react. So lots of depth issues for the Cowboys right now. I'm not going to trade up. We're going to start this draft, and we're going to head all the way down to the 24th pick and then figure out what to do. Lots of good options available to the Cowboys here. We have Newton on the defensive line, which would be a big asset for Dallas. Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon could come in and be a starting center this year. Amarius Mims as a tackle potential player. However, there's also five trade offers that are available to us here. And unfortunately, the highest pick that's being offered is the New Orleans Saints 45. And I just don't want to drop down from 24 to 45. So we're not going to do that. We're going to draft a player with the 24th pick. I would have loved to stockpile some additional assets here, but this could be any of the big three. If we take a look at Newton really quickly, Dallas went defensive line last year with Mazai Smith. Newton had a horrible 2021, but two very good years. And if we take a look at the analysis for Newton here as well, quick handwork, good feet. The issue is that he's light. And that would be a very particular issue for the Dallas Cowboys since they really struggled in run defense last year when they were missing a couple defensive linemen. You got the pass rushers there already. You're looking for a run stopper. Newton might not be the best fit for the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll move on and potentially look at offensive line here. Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, a uh, solid player all around, good run blocker, good uh, pass blocker as well. If we check out his analysis here, uh, big time mover in the run game. We do know Mike McCarthy loves to run the ball. Uh, basically getting slagged for his short arms, uh, which happens a lot with offensive linemen. Obviously, you want to have bigger arms to push defenders away from you. If we take quickly look at his trends, we can see um, what happened post. So post combine, he really got a big boost here up to the first round. And you can see that he's being mocked 15% of the time to the Dallas Cowboys by pro football focus users as well. So He's in play here uh, and very likely the pick, but we'll take a look at Amarius Mims really quickly as well as at tackle from Georgia. Three consistent years, not a great run blocker, especially his own run blocker. If we look at the analysis for him, uh, we'll see that not a polished prospect, and that's fine. We have Tyler Smith at left tackle. We do have Terrence Steele at right tackle. We don't need someone to step in right away. Uh, but overall, I think I like the look of Jackson Powers Johnson the most out of Oregon. Uh, Cowboys went with the center many, many years ago by the name of Travis, Fet Travis Frederick, excuse me, in the first round, who was expected to be drafted in the third round. He turned out to be an amazing center. We're going Jackson Powers Johnson with the 24 pick for the Dallas Cowboys. 
beefing up that offensive line for them. Okay, we're here at pick number 56 in the second round, late second round for the Cowboys. So Javon Bullard from Georgia, safety at the top of the board, doesn't really fill a positional need. And also, I mean, PFF ranking him at 48th, but most mock drafts right now have him going early third round. Uh, I'm not so keen on really anyone who's at the top of the board here. Uh, Jatavian Sanders, tight end, not really a huge need for the Cowboys right now. Wide receiver certainly is, but Jermaine Burton, pretty high here at 52. Uh, I feel like if he went 56, which is our pick in real life, that would be a bit of a reach right now. If we scroll down here a little bit more, let's see what other prospects are available to us. Okay, we get we got some interesting ones at the bottom here. So Jalen Polk, a wide receiver out of Washington, um, known as like a hands catcher, a guy that can go up and get it. And that's something that the Cowboys will be missing. C.D. Lamb is in the slot. Brandon Cooks is a bit of a burner. They don't have that guy on the outside that can go up and get it. So that would be an interesting one for me. Chris Jenkins as well, a uh, defensive lineman out of Michigan, would be a foot uh, a good fit, excuse me. They went defensive line out of Michigan last year with Mazai Smith. It didn't work out, but they could go back there. We also have two trade options available. So let's look at those trade options. And Green Bay is willing to move up a couple spots here. So let's see if we can we can trade down and accumulate a little more drop draft capital. So we'll give up the 56. Um, let's throw their 88 in there. They will not accept that. Let's see if they take it for our 174. 5% chance. Let's offer it up and see if we can fleece Green Bay. And we did. That Packers organization, and believe me, I've done a lot of these PFF mock drafts. They don't just go through at 5% regularly, but Green Bay really wants his pick. So someone on deck there. We're going to resume the draft. Go two more picks here, which Green, Green Bay took Jermaine Burton. Jonathan Brooks went to Tampa Bay. And now we have no trade offers available to us, so we can make this pick. So either we're going to go Jalen Polk of Washington or Chris Jenkins. Uh, let's take a look at Polk really quickly and check out his analysis here at PFF. Limited route runner, but one of the best go up and get it contested catch receivers. So. I'm bang on there. I mean, he, he's not the greatest receiver, but you know what? If this was a different draft and this is a receiver heavy draft, you probably see him go off the board a lot earlier than this. So he's definitely in play. And then we have Chris Jenkins of Michigan, who we can check out as well, who I'd love to have here. If we take a look at his analysis on top of this as well, one of the strongest players in the entire draft class, uh, arm length limitations, and this likely limits his draft stock to a mid to late day two selection. We're late day two right here. This is tough. Pound for pound, he might be the strongest player in the class, the draft class, which is something the Cowboys are desperately missing on the inside of their defense right now. Big body. This could be a coin flip, could go either way. I'm going to opt to go defense here and take Chris Jenkins of the Michigan Wolverines at number 58 for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, we're at pick number 87 here. We got back-to-back -back picks, 87 and 88, after trading down with the Green Bay Packers. So we're going to get to make two selections here. Um, lots of options available to us, but again, I'm about drafting for value rather than straight position. Andrew Phillips here would be a little bit of a reach. I know Dallas is looking for a corner, I know the ADP on the PFF mock drafts is just under 82. I think he's more of a prospect that's going to go between 100 and 110. The same with Jamari Thrash. No disrespect to him as a receiver. I think we'll probably find better receivers uh, or ones that will actually go higher in the draft in real life. Trey Benson is very interesting. I'm not a big fan of drafting running backs early, but Trey B Benson at one time was being talked about like in the 50s in terms of his draft range. I think he's certainly someone we could take a look at there. Patrick Paul at tackle, another solid option out of Houston. Big body. Pretty sure he's extremely... Let's click into Patrick Paul really quickly and take a look at his analysis. But I remember him being a big boy. Yeah, his size alone makes him worth betting on. Uh, footwork, a little bit of an issue. Lacks some intensity as a run blocker. But he would certainly be a worthwhile pick uh, in this type of range as well. And if we just keep going down the draft board a little bit further, see Cedric Van Pran is available here 
uh, at center. We went center with our first pick, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't move one of these guys to a guard at some point or another as well. Um, and he certainly would be a, a decent positional value pick at this point. 87 and 88 back to back. Let's click into Trey Benson really quickly at running back as well up top. And click his trends uh, for one second as well. So yeah, we're seeing his draft, draft stock falling off uh, quite a bit. At one point was projected, like I said, even up to as high as 40 in terms of his ADP. Uh, let's look at his analysis now really quickly and see why the fall off. Um, so lots of cons here. Brings a lot of NFL athleticism and explosiveness. Needs more patience in order to maximize his athletic gifts and be more of a committee running back. Interesting. I tend to like to take chances on guys that would have went a lot higher and have fallen off in recent months. Like we're, we're seeing a significant downslide. It's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to say we will go with Trey Benson here at number 87. Some people might hate picking the running back, but Dallas is just like lacking some explosiveness out of the backfield right now. And we're going to go Patrick Paul at tackle with the 88th pick in the draft. So a little bit of offensive uh, bias there, but I think two people that make a lot of sense. And PFF grades the draft, B plus for the first two picks. They don't grade the trades anymore. Trey Benson, they like that pick in that spot. And Patrick Paul, overall, we get an A minus grade. But personally, I would love this draft for the Cowboys. You lose offensive linemen in Tyron Smith, Tyler Biotish. You got Zach Martin getting older. So it's a it's a weak spot right now. So we try to address offensive line in the first three rounds here. We do go with a running back, which some people might not like. And then we go with a big body in the middle of that defense to prevent the Cowboys from getting run all over. So that's going to be it for this draft. Let me know how you think I did down in the comments below. And listen, I can take it. If you don't like it, you would have done something different. Uh, drop it down there. Also, if there's a team you'd like to see, make sure you drop that down there as well. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button down below. Make sure you sub here to Forward Progress for more NFL content leading up to the draft.